Okay, so welcome to our, um, this is like a random time team call and also our road to residual training. So the focus today is going to be around income, which Kate said she was cool with. I was like, I can do your stats. And she was like, nope, I'm totally income focused unless my rank affects my income. So if the rank positively affects her income, great. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't really matter to her, which is totally our jam. Um, so I'm just going to let you know that I'm looking at what she sent me. And this, this week, whatever the week she gave me was, last year she made $68. And this week, this year, she made $912. So I don't know what the percentage of increase is on that, and I like math, but that's a lot. Um, I don't, I couldn't do that math on the top of my head. But um, obviously, you guys know there's an income disclaimer that Beachbody doesn't guarantee any level of income. But Kate saw a massive change in her business when she started using the new vitals with the business activity tracker, and she did increase her success club numbers, which I know isn't our focus. Our focus is income. Um, but obviously she increased her income as well. So I think that's really important to remember. And Kate, I think she has a presentation for us. She's going to go over, um, her presentation. She said it's about 30 minutes or so, and then we can ask any questions we want. Um, so really what changed in her business and she's been a coach at least three years, right, Kate? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause she sent me her income 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. So the math there is at least three years. So um, she's been kind of stagnant and literally, I think it was October was they launched the new tracker, Kate? Yep. Yep. And that's when her business took off when she started using this tracker. Just really quick before she jumps into it, I was talking to um, a girl on the team today and she was like, oh, the time they give me on the tracker is not, I don't have that much time. So just because you don't have that much time doesn't mean you shouldn't do that at all. My suggestion is to cut everything in half or cut everything in a fourth time-wise, but make sure you're still doing everything on there. Like if, if you have 25 minutes a day or you have an hour a day, don't just do the two activities that are 30 minutes each. Do, you know, those activities for 15 minutes and five, you know, like cut the times in whatever you need to make it work in your schedule. Okay. That's really all I'm going to say. Kate, it's all yours. Okay. Well, hi everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And let's see if this works. There we go. Pretty. This is, oh guys, I'm, I see some of my team is on the call and you guys, I'm so bad at PowerPoint. I'm trying to remember how I start this presentation presenter view maybe no oh you guys okay here we go all right so can everyone see this okay yeah okay so we kind of hit on this but just to kind of level set so I started back in August 2015 so I've been with Beachbody for three and a half years um, but really was kind of up and down, was really inconsistent in whether I was even getting a paycheck at all. One of my early goals was to be able to pay for my products. Um, my husband started joining me in Shakeology and my workout. So I was like, okay, that's a really killer goal that for both of us, I would be able to pay for our products. But it was just sort of this wish that was out there for over three years, no real traction on it. Um, until six months ago. And that's where um, you can see the difference in everything from success club points to income to the number of coaches that I have personally sponsored really exploded um, starting in October. But before I can really dive into that, um, one of my upline coaches is Pat Railman with Team Boom. And one of the things that he tells us all the time is to share the shit. And he says, don't just say the good things and don't just celebrate, you know, all of the great things and victories that you have. You have to tell people where you started and help people relate to you and be really willing to be vulnerable about where you were and what wasn't working for you. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to back way up and show you. This was me when I was little. Um, when I was about three years old, I was diagnosed with a rare bone disorder. I was standing at my parents, grandparents' house on Christmas Day when my grandfather said, uh, what's wrong with her legs? 
Uh, my parents spent the next few months trying to figure out why my legs didn't look really straight. Um, it was at various hospitals, including the Mayo Clinic I'm from Minneapolis. Um, it turned out that I had this rare bone condition where I, my legs were crooked and different lengths. So I spent most of my childhood in and out of the hospital. I had about 25 major leg surgeries growing up. Um, by the time I hit my 20s, uh, mid to late 20s, I was having knee pain every single night. My kneecap was dislocating five to six times a month. You can see here, uh, this is an x-ray, um, summer of 2015, and my kneecap isn't sitting right. A surgeon told me that my only real hope was just to manage my pain while I could uh, and just hold off on a knee replacement as long as I could. But he said, if you make it until 40 without getting a double knee replacement, I would be shocked. Um, so this is building up to the summer I discovered Beachbody. So I'm hearing that in my head of, you're not gonna make it until 40, don't do anything, just kind of sit and get off your knees. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gaining a lot of weight. I'm really unhappy with how I look in the mirror. I'm really losing all of my confidence. I'm beginning to be kind of cranky to be around. Uh, in hindsight, I'm realizing it's because I don't have much confidence. Um, then one day in August of 2015, this pops up in my Facebook memories. And it's a photo of me a few years prior. And it was really shocking to me that day. And it was really my wake up call because this is what I looked like then. And it was sort of this kind of forcing me to see how much physically I'd changed and how I really wasn't um, happy with the way my life was going in so many directions, but that was just kind of like the final straw to see in my face, I'm gaining a lot of weight, I'm not living the life I wanna live. So I marched up to the elliptical, I lasted eight minutes. My calves were burning, I was out of breath, I felt terrible, I got off, I actually took this photo, literally it was after I got off the elliptical and was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do, this is out of control, can't even work out. It was literally after I took this photo standing in that gym that I saw a Facebook post from a former coworker. I didn't even know her very well, um, but she popped up in my feet at that exact moment that I needed her and mentioned a challenge group that she had coming up about feeling confident in her skin. So I messaged her one message, said, what's this group I think I need in? She explained what the 21 day fixes and what my very, my second message to her was that I was in and I wanted the link to purchase. So it was just like, I was ready to go. I started the 21 day fix in August, 2015. Within a year, I lost 70 pounds. Yeah. I dropped from a pant size 16 down to or two or four at that time. But more importantly, I actually had energy. <laughs> I was starting to like what I saw and what I felt like and who I was becoming. I felt like I was a more patient person. I felt like I was living instead of sitting on the couch all of the time. And I was just falling in love with this process and feeling like, oh my God, why doesn't everybody know about this? Um, I was a Beachbody Challenge winner. I submitted, I actually had to submit more than once, but Beachbody followed up. Um, I was one of those daily winners where you win a $500 cash prize and they featured me in some of their uh, social media and blogs. Um, so this is all the first year. It was going amazing, right? I was proof of the product. I'm going to all, all of these live events. I was building this following on Facebook. I'm going to Summit. I went out to GoPro, which is a network marketers conference in Vegas. I went twice. I was flying out to different conferences and team events. But I wasn't doing anything on the business side. I wasn't making enough money to even cover the, the products. That goal that I had for two years to make enough income to just cover our products was not anywhere in sight. There were a lot of most weeks, the majority of weeks, I wasn't even making a paycheck. I rarely hit Success Club. I was stuck at Emerald. Um, I hit Diamond and then lost it. Um, it was just, I was stagnant. I would have people occasionally say to me that they thought I had a lot of potential, but the truth was I just didn't believe them. Um, and I couldn't see how it could happen. And the truth was I was not doing the vital behaviors. 
So be proof that products work. I was doing that. That's easy. Um, for me, that's the easiest vital behavior personally. And I continue to do that. And I feel like I am that walking success story. That's easy. But I think at least when I started, I thought that people would come along just because I'd had success. And that I sort of took for granted that I really needed to do the other three vital behaviors. The second one, inviting, I was terrible at. Um, and I was okay at reaching out, but I was awful about following up. And I got in my head when people responded, when I said, would you be interested in joining? And people responded and asked questions. I was paralyzed and I hated, I just dreaded going to open my inbox because I didn't know what to say. And I would wait weeks or months to follow, to even open the message or respond because I was just like so overwhelmed by it and had no confidence in what to say to these people. So I could never really complete the invite process. Um, recognize was fine. I wasn't bringing a lot of people in to really recognize and I didn't, I didn't even know what that really meant. And then finally, personal development, I was doing, and I have this little, like the family emoji on there because I was doing personal development, but I was doing what everyone else was doing. I was doing, reading the books that people said that they were reading. And I started to realize that wasn't what I needed. I wasn't really embracing the spirit of personal development, which is strengthening and bettering yourself and really focusing on not what do I, what is everyone else doing? What do I think I'm supposed to be reading or listening to? And just really finding the thing that really lit up my soul and really felt like it was changing the way that I thought about myself and about the world. So it kind of hit me that working this business is like losing weight. We have people who have given us a guide on what to do. It's handed to us on a silver platter. Rather, so I'm 21 to fix portion fix girl. So with the portion fix, you are told, you have the flexibility to figure it out, but here's the structure, here's how many times you need to do each thing each day, just go do it and trust the process. Slow, consistent, you will get there. Same thing with the business activity trackers that Beachbody has given us. And there was the new one in October, but there's been one for years. It's the exact same thing where Beachbody says, you have the flexibility to make it your own and be authentic and be you, but here you go. Here's how many things you should do each day. And here's the structure and be consistent over time and it will add up. It's the exact same thing, but I wasn't trusting the process and I wasn't just following the to-do list that Beachbody gave me. And really believing that if I did this every day, that I would succeed, that it was inevitable that if I do this every day, I will succeed. So that's when I started. I said, you know what, if I'm ever going to make this happen, it's going to be now. And I'll get to that moment in just one second. But the, the, I mean, walk through some changes that I made um, to really start living these vital behaviors and living that business activity tracker. Change one, I put this first because I think it's so key is that you have to find the right personal development for you because this business is all about mindset. If you do not believe in what we do and if you are not in tune with how it's changed you and your mindset and your life, and if you can't build that confidence around it, that's gonna be your biggest struggle. So I personally believe that getting the right personal development is gonna be a bigger game changer than anything. It changed my life more than losing 80 pounds did. So I'm listening to all of these business personal developments, all of these goal setting, whatever. It wasn't until I started listening to the Life Coach School that things started clicking for me. I listened to 200 episodes in less than a year. Um, and then between that and the other personal development I was doing, I think I was averaging over an hour a day because I was listening to it in the shower as I put my makeup on, as I drove to work, as I drove home from work. I was just filling those pockets of my day by listening to it and just letting it soak in and constantly having the personal development that I needed and not what anyone else needed, what was right for me coming in my ear. Change two, write down your why and what life looks like. So, I mean, everyone always says, what is your why? And I kind of was like, oh yeah, and kind of spit something out. But to be honest with you, I wasn't really 
passionate about it or honest with myself. And I sort of felt like I should have a certain like weighty why that sounded good and sounded powerful instead of just being honest. And what changed is when I asked myself and actually a mentor asked me, what would you do if every day with your life, if money and time weren't an object, what would your life look like if you got to design it? And that's what led me to my why. And it's for me, it's I want my husband and I to go see that our favorite musical artist is playing a concert tomorrow night and be able to book that flight and go and not have to worry about taking a day off work, not have to worry about checking our bank account for the flight or for the tickets. I want to go home and see my niece dance in a recital. And I want to be recognized as a part, positive part of someone else's journey toward getting the same energy and confidence that I've had. These were things I almost felt like embarrassed about that I couldn't admit that like I couldn't say that I want to be recognized for that, but I do. And I, now I embrace that, that these are things that motivate me and fuel me in life and get me excited. And I look at these every day. I have my why on the top of my bat, my business activity tracker that I look at every single morning. I do a power hour uh, Monday through Friday with a friend of mine. And I look at that every single day of what is it? What is that vision I have for my life and what's going to power me through on those days that I really don't want to do my to-do list. Change three was downloading the new bat. So I am fortunate enough that uh, one of my upline coaches who I think is on the call, Caroline Nathan, uh, was invited by corporate to test the new Beachbody activity tracker and she could extend that invite to some people in her downline. And so last October, before it went out to the whole network, there were people who said, yes, I commit to trying this five days a week, 100%. And I was one of those people. And I said, if I'm ever going to make this happen, this is my opportunity. That all corporate and all of the top coaches in the, in the company said, here's what you have to do for success. And so if I can't succeed with this, I'll never succeed in this business. So I talked to my husband, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I can try, I can do anything for eight weeks. So I downloaded it and I started doing it every day. The one on the left is the actual version. The one on the right, I put a screenshot. I personally found it worked better for me to do it in Google. I, I'm a big Google Drive girl. So I have it as a Google spreadsheet so that I'm able to pop back and forth between my phone and my laptop more easily. Um, so I just copy the exact same things and I put, I check off the little boxes. So it's the exact same thing. I just encourage people to find what works for you, whether you want to print it out, whether you want to have it on your phone, whether you want to do a Google sheet, whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is that you have this to-do list written. It's a guide to success from the top coaches. But I still to this day pull this up every single morning and that's what I follow. Uh, change four is just the decide. decide. Uh, and we all know with the beach body, you've probably seen the logo, decide, commit, succeed. And I think it's true of really making the decision. I was kind of like waffling before. And it's once I said, no, I'm going to do this and I'm going to show up. This is my friend, Lisa, a teammate of mine who we have a power hour every single morning. We meet no later than 4.30 a.m. on a Zoom. Um, and we are, it's silent. We don't talk, uh, occasionally we'll wave at each other, <laughs> but that's about it. But we just show up for the accountability. Um, and I said, that's it. I'm going to do it. I'm committing because I'm not going to half-ass this and it's not going to happen by accident. It's going to happen because I sit down and I'm consistent in showing up and doing my to-do list. Uh, next up, I sent a lot more invites. <laughs> um, it's a numbers game really, uh, the what so when I used to see people getting success club 30 or getting you know six figure incomes I would like I would be wondering like what is that magical invite they have <laughs> or what did they do differently in building their business or their success story that is making them so lucky and I realized no we all probably have about the same conversion rate of the percentage of people who end up joining our team it's just the people who are bringing in more income and bringing in more people to their team are consistently talking to more people than I was. So I got comfortable with reaching out. So I started sending cold invites to the people who were watching my Instagram stories. 
I was making sure I was really consistent about following up with everybody who was liking or commenting. I was really expanding that network and making sure that I was just starting a lot of conversations. And I found it was not as scary as I made it out in my head to be. And people were actually really polite. Um, I, I can't even tell you that I've had somebody be super rude to me about reaching out with an invite. As long as you're like authentic and nice, um, people are nice. It's not a big deal. It's not scary if people say no. Um, it's amazing though the number of people that I've found that I don't think we're going to start a conversation with me, but who've said, oh my God, I've been watching you for weeks or months. Um, and they didn't say anything, but I'm glad that I opened that door to say something. Uh, next up. Look at yourself as a partner or a guide. Um, so I used to focus on challenge packs now. And I, like I said, I used to be really intimidated by what to say once I sent that invite and somebody expressed interest. And this national wake up call, and this was just at the beginning of February, like nailed it. I listened to it three times in a row that week because it was like, oh my, it was just so good. If you haven't listened to it yet, I highly recommend it. So it's not just about share a cart. If you haven't listened to it, she talks about her philosophy on the invite process and how her role is to be a guide or a mentor and help partner with you to craft a fitness and or nutrition plan that gets you to your goals. And so that's one of, once I started thinking of myself like that, I took away the pressure and it took away the pressure on the other person. I stopped being focused on a challenge pack it didn't feel like I was trying to sell anyone. It just felt like, okay, this person needs something. And I believe that we have so many tools in our pocket that I know the tool, the toolbox really well. So I'm going to help you navigate that toolbox and figure out what you might like, because I know the programs and the nutrition tools so well, then I'm going to help you kind of figure out which ones you might like to. Once I started thinking of it like that, of I'm just your partner and helping you draft this plan, that helped a ton for me to really um, be more confident in the invite process and also expand the number of offerings that I was giving to people. Because if you look at my share carts, like every sixth one maybe is a challenge pack, but I'm doing everything from energized to beach body on demand only to just a free trial of just getting people hooked up with whatever tools fit into their life and make sense for them at that moment. Uh, number seven is to track in your own way. I did not track at all for years. I thought it was time consuming to be honest. Um, some of the tools that people mention, like I've heard people talk about like streak and I tried that for a hot minute and it was super overwhelming to me. And I thought, well, it's just slowing me down. I'll be faster if I just scroll through my inbox and see messages that are unread. Didn't work. I still am discovering to this day, like I'll go in and try to message someone and go, ooh, yikes, they messaged me back like a year ago and I totally forgot about them because I wasn't tracking. Um, so I personally like Trello and you'll see you can set up columns and there's what's called cards and I set up a card for each person and there's this handy little video that'll play. Oh, it might not play. Um, you can draw, um, I'll use my mouse here if that helps. So you can click on a name and you can drag it back and forth between columns. So that's literally all I'll do. I'll throw their name on there and once they express interest, I'll move them over it in back and forth in between columns and that's how I keep my eye on somebody and if somebody says no not now then okay, okay well then you can see at the top left then I will check back in January and I'll move their name over there and it's just a super simple fast way for me to keep track again it's called Trello t-r-e-l-l-o dot com it's free it's a website um, super easy as a way for me to keep track of those names and follow up uh, next up, skip the script, but do save your FAQ. So one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was that once you say something twice, save it. Um, so anytime that I have said something or answer a question, I save it into a, just one master note file in my notes on my phone. That's sped it up. It's increased my confidence because I've been able to really craft and perfect the language that I use with people and it just speeds me up over time. So for the, for I think most people are probably pretty crunched for time as they're trying to do their to-do list. This helped be a time saver for me. 
so that I could answer those frequently asked questions super fast and spend more time actually talking to people one on one or spending time in my um, challenge group. Um, next up, earn the right to invite and coach publicly. Um, so this is something I changed a little bit just based on the Life Coach School podcast, something that she does that I really love. So she has this free podcast that she is spending a lot of her time sharing a lot of her insights. And then at the end, there's this little sales pitch sometimes where she says, if you want more, if you want to go deeper, I have a program that you can pay into for more. Well, I eventually did last year because I trusted her so much from listening to her podcast for so long and I believed in her and I was like, she knows what she's doing and she can be really helpful. So I started applying the same thinking to some of my posts where I will put daily tips about motivation or modification, about mindset tips um, that I really want to show people a little bit behind the scenes and give them an idea of what they can expect and start, you wanna give them some FOMO, but you also wanna give people an idea of like, no, this is really helpful, I'm not just trying to sell you on something. Um, and so that people find you helpful and inspiring long before you invite them so that you already have that trust and that people who are excited and want to be part of what you are doing. Um, next up, I focus really on in educating my existing customers, Shakeology in particular. I think that um, a lot of people have no idea what they are drinking. We just tell them you should drink it at Superfoods, but that doesn't mean anything to anybody. So I've spent a lot of time in every challenge group explaining what the heck Shakeology is and what it isn't and how it's different from other brands. I have these little mini infographics that I'll share. We have, I have questions that I'll ask people about Shakeology, but I also share a ton of recipes. Um, of my, I sh share my shake recipe almost every single day. I have like this chocolate mug cake that people like. I share my chocolate ice cream that I make with Shakeology, things like that to get people excited about it, but also to get them to understand what the heck it is. And I've had people who ditched Shakeology a long time ago who now have come back and ordered it again now that they know what it is and they've even become discount coaches. And now I just had one who went through that who now wants to learn how to coach. And it all started because she, her interest peaked again in going, oh, I did not realize that Shakeology had all of these things in it that can help me. And that kind of got her interest going again. Um, Change 11 is the accountability bet. This is one of the other things that I did to really try to build that, that vital behavior where we are giving people this ex experience and helping them have success. And so I took the idea of the diet bet that you might have seen where people will pay into a cash pot and they'll say, okay, if I lose X percentage of my body weight within three months or whatever, then you get to split the cash pot. So I took the concept and applied it to my challenge groups. And I said to people, totally optional, but if you would like to pay into a pot, we can all pay $21 into a cash pot. And if you check in every single night for all 21 days, the winners get to sp split the cash pot. I had no idea how much it would take off, how people loved it. And it's just, it's that competitiveness, that little bit of, you know, uh, teeth in the game, skin in the game, whatever that saying is, that gets people really tuned in and engaged. And they had a bigger reason to show up in the group. And the accountability and the engagement in that group really exploded at that point. You'll see the other way. I run my groups with a few other coaches. Here's how we check in every day. So we keep it super simple that people check in on a poll um, of all of the things they did that day and then we just ask them to drop a comment. It's usually, um, you comment below and tell us about your day was a really generic one. Oftentimes we just do a fun icebreaker question that gets people talking to each other and showing up. Um, so again, there's that bonding and that whole experience. And finally, 12, change 12, this is how that changed my income, is because I created this experience that people really loved and they wanted to be a part of because they had this team and they really felt like they were in it together and you had this chance to win and they're showing up each day. So now they really want to be in my monthly challenge groups. So I said, okay, that's great. 
but people can't keep doing that indefinitely if you're not buying anything. So I instituted a minimum spend of $20 to be in that particular group. I run a paid group and a free group. Now, when I first started, I thought free group was just kind of like anybody in the world can join this. How I treat the free group is this one is open 365 days a year to any of my customers. And I contribute to it all the time. I hop in, I go live, I share Beachbody news. So if there's a new program coming out, when Transform 20 was released to Beachbody On Demand, I posted that in there, I do all of that kind of stuff. And then I tell people, all right, and if you wanna join the more formal accountability challenge, you just have to spend at least $20 in the last 30 days on a Beachbody product. And people want to be part of it because it's such an active, engaged group that people are going, okay, what can I spend as a count? Can I get in? What if I buy Energize? What if I buy a sampler pack of Shakeology? So you get people, it's just those little bits of volume that are coming in, but it's getting people hooked on our products. It's getting people excited about being in the group. And then a lot of those people, the people are the ones that are really turning into um, my consistent people who are kind of coaching in the group who might be my potential next coaches, all because they just really wanted to be part of a really active community. And I helped set that standard with the, the $20 order. And that's it. I wanted to fly kind of fast and leave time for any questions or discussion. Um, well, that was awesome. I, I love the, the, like some really, I had a lot of, I love the $20 takeaway. That's super cool. That's really smart. Um, when Caroline first told me you were doing this, I didn't necessarily tell her that we were really income focused, but then when you and I had the discussion, I felt like we really jived on that. So I loved the income pieces that you gave us because like $20 is really doable for someone, you know, and, and that's like, I don't even know that we have anything that costs less than $20, you know? So, um, that's awesome. So basically it's like buy something and get this next level support, which is awesome. So I loved that. And I so appreciated that piece of advice. Um, does anyone have any questions? I'm sorry, go ahead. One thing, so Caroline actually did that first, and to be totally honest with you, at first I was like, no, I feel bad. I want to be able to offer a great experience to all of my challengers, or I don't want to surprise them by asking for $20. Well, I still have that free group that's awesome for people, and I think one of the things that really helped me was when I started really appreciating how much my life has changed inside and out because of Beachbody and how I would pay a million times over to have met the people I did, to have the energy I have, to have changed the mindset I have. And so it's made me more confident in everything from the invite process to having that $20 minimum to say, that's nothing. I just want you to invest in yourself. That's all I'm asking for is for you to invest in yourself because I know these products will work and I'm so confident that they will change your life. Worst case scenario, there's a 30 day money back guarantee if you hate it. Yes. Okay, what questions do you guys have? No one has any questions? Are you all just mind blown? I got a lot of good takeaways. Whitney's mind blown apparently. I heard her go when you said I lost 70 pounds a year. I heard Whitney go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I cuss too, but that's, I love that. That's like, that's why I do this. I've lost that too. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to see. So, and congratulations on being a challenge winner too. That's awesome. Thank you. I love that you get on calls too. And you don't talk. You're like, we just get on a call and we don't talk. I was like, what? So you just like click on a zoom link and you just, yeah, okay. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, it's literally like what some Lisa, the woman that I meet every day. And there was literally like one day where I was like, Lisa, cause I wanted to get a picture of us smiling. <laughs> um, but it's no, we don't talk. And, um, we have another friend who started to join us and it's literally, we will message each other if it's 10 minutes after and we're like, Hey, where are you? 
just, and it's that accountability. So, and I know, so when my alarm goes off there, I can't tell you how many mornings that I've been like, crap, <laughs> I don't want to get up, but I know Lisa's there and she's going to call me out if she does not see me on the other side of that zoom up working. And so we don't say anything. We're both doing our own thing, but it's just, we're showing up together and it's just that accountability to show up every morning. Um, and it's just kind of fun feeling like you're in it with somebody else. It's really helped her and I bond. So you have somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of. Um, but it's really just for the, I, I really want to show up, make sure I get my stuff done. And it's a way to make sure that we both do it. And we're there to hold each other accountable to that promise to ourselves. Yeah. And I love that it's, I truthfully do do seven days, but I love that you are honest and you're like, I do five days. I'm sure you still show up on social media on the weekends, but you don't do like the full power hour. Is that how you do that? So yeah. Occasionally she'll be like, Hey, do you want to do a power hour this weekend? It totally depends on what's going on in my life. Um, yeah. I, so for the Instagram stories, part of the bat, um, that's just become part of my daily routine. I do the same sorts of things every day. So it's become so easy that I don't have to think about most of those stories to check off most of the boxes. So I do those. Yeah, I do those seven days a week. Um, but in terms of inviting and following up, I, I aim for five days a week. Okay. Yeah. Else that is icing on the cake. Yeah. That's for, awesome. me, that's, for me, that's a realistic way to do it so that if I miss one day, I don't feel like I failed the week and that I have a reason to just give up kind of just the same as weight loss. Um, that it's like, I don't have to be perfect as long as I'm consistent most of the time. So I'm going to allow myself a day or two where maybe I don't invite or follow up the way that I would during the week. Um, but I still crush this week if I did it at least five days. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I have not been as good at, at using the bat. I'm like you at first. I didn't track. I do use streak cause I like it. I know you said you use Trello. Trello? What you say? Trello, yeah. Trello. Yeah. So everyone has their own thing that they love, but streak works for me, but I need to do better with the bat. I actually had um, the same opportunity as um, Caroline and I had five coaches join me. And unfortunately I don't think a single one of them like really engaged in the group at all. And it was really sad to see because it was such a cool opportunity with corporate. So I'm hoping like seeing someone's, it was hard, right? Because there was no, they were basically, you and they were basically guinea pigs. It was like, well, is this going to work? Like that's what it was. And so I think that it was hard because they didn't see the success yet. But now that they're seeing someone like you success, I'm hoping that it will help people engage. So that's awesome. Does anyone have anything else? Can I just ask how you, I feel the same way about you. The $20 makes me nervous. How do you word that? Like, are you just like, oh, this is my free group. Like if you've ever bought anything from me, this is where I'll pop you. But if you spend $20, you get. So I'm going to actually pull it up and tell you exactly. Oh, what. last thing I was going to ask. Sorry, before I forget, can I get your Shakeology, what you post? Like you said, yeah. you keep the images. Can you send that to me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I find that certain things like that $20 minimum, if you don't make it a big deal, it's not a big deal. Um, so the way I phrase it is, so I'll, so in my, in that big free group. So I, what I do is I say, fill out this Google form. If you want to join the next challenge group. And that's just purely because I have a lot of people now. It's how I keep track of people. Um, it's how I keep track of that. People want to join. I'm asking them a few questions to make sure they're thinking it through. Like what workout program are you going to do? Which you know, nutrition program are you going to commit to? so that they're thinking it through and so that I know what their game plan is and where they need help. And in that, in that form, I'll ask people to choose one of three options. And it's, I've invested $20 in Beachbody products in the last month. I need help picking out $20 in Beachbody products, or this is my first time with you because every first group is free for my new customers. And then in the group, the way I phrase it, when I post and say, hey, this Google form is now available. If you want to join the next challenge group, I explain what the challenge group is. 
And then I say to join this particular challenge, the only requirement is you spend at least $20 in Beachbody orders. That shows us you're active, engaged, and ready to succeed. So just make it super informal. Um, and then for me, it's just, it's, like I said, I just make sure that I'm really showing up in the sparks that I'm not letting down my free groups that I'm not letting down anybody. I'm not giving up on anyone, but that way I can encourage people to invest in themselves and I can really spend my time on the people who are showing up, who are committed, who are saying, I really want to crush this. I really want to invest in myself and my future. I know who they are so that I can spend more time on them. And the, FOMO that happens with other people is really encourage them to help st step up and want to invest in their own health as well. Makes me like rethink how I do all my groups. It's a whole, cause I have a free group that's literally a free group. Like it's, if you've never bought anything Beachbody and then I have a paid group that's ongoing. That's for people that have bought anything at one, at some point. Um, and that I used to open and close groups every month, but people got lost and they got angry. But like, at least if I had, maybe I'll open like a, basically I'll have like a free, free group, a free paid group, right? So people that have bought something, which is what you consider your free group, right? Like people, your first time customers. And then maybe I could do like a third group for people that are really investing in themselves. So I tried that one at first of like a free, free, where it was purely like people mm -hmm. who had never done anything with Beachbody I found personally at least at that point in my business it was super hard to get traction um, there wasn't a lot of engagement and I wasn't seeing a big return on the investment of my time and my energy there yeah I, I I do pretty well with it so I do monthly challenges in there so the first month of the week we do a challenge we have a crock pot versus instant pot challenge right now and then like, if I'm ever dry for people to reach out to, or like I need to build up my business, I can go in that group and see who I have in there and, you know, start having conversations. So um, that's why I like it. So yeah, and it, it's something different obviously works for everyone. For me, I've, it's pretty rare now that I'll add anybody to that group without having them have made a purchase, mm -hmm. uh, but I will. So there are people in there who have not ever made a purchase, but for most of them, I treat it more as like, here's my way of talking to all customers who've ever done anything. So they all know this is a Beachbody group. You're going to see my announcements about Beachbody coming up. You're going to see my announcement about products coming out, about programs coming out, but people are also posting their sweaty selfies. So I do in my challenge groups, I do three weeks on one week off. And in that off week, I tell people, group is closing, go over to the Spark and post in there instead for a week. So that kind of gets the flurry of activity. And that's part of what kind of gets that FOMO going again. Um, because all of a sudden you see these super active people who are already like, so when you have three weeks on and people are used to sharing their sweaty selfies every day or talking about their progress, they go post it in that free group so all of these other people who kind of dropped away from my beach buddy groups are coming back because they see this and they see the consistency that people are having and the results people are having and getting that FOMO. My mind is blown. Like Whitney's got a duck face going on. How come I'm the only talking? You guys don't have any questions. <laughs> I don't I'm just taking it all in. It's that just blew my mind. And I'm not taking notes. <laughs> so no, that it's so good to like, just hear what other people do. Cause I think I get in such a rut. Like I have a really good template, but it's like, it's just like the same. I feel like it's just like same stuff. So this is good. Freshen it up, get people back in the game too. Yeah, I have a question for you. Yeah. How do you track your challengers in your challenge group? Like Rob and I are like dabbling a few different ways and we aren't like finding a good way of doing it. What do you mean by track them? Like right, we, we were doing like daily check-ins so whoever checked in would get a point. And then we we're trying to do it every day and like update it every day. And it was just a lot of work. And then we tried this month to do a Google doc sheet where they would 
track their like nutrition workout and did they drink Shakeology so that they could see it but like half of them couldn't access the google docs and it was like a disaster so we like changed it literally the other day and I was like okay I don't know where to go from here are you, are you doing your groups on Facebook or the challenge tracker Facebook okay yeah because I am too um I have I do have a group open on the challenge tracker app just because I work so much of my business on Instagram and there are more and more people who don't have Facebook or don't like Facebook um so I do have that but the people who have been around with me for a while prefer Facebook they say it's just much more engaging so I'm going to go where the crowd is for the moment um, so what we do on Facebook, and here I'm going to share my screen again for a second. Um, can you see it, Casey? So I, so every morning I post, or if I'm running with another coach, another coach might post. But what I tell everybody they can expect is that every day at 6 a.m. there's going to be a post from me or another coach that's going to have a tip of the day, a discussion. There's always some sort of prompt getting people to, to converse. So, um, you'll see it. My group is super active. It's awesome. Okay. So like day two, I posted this morning, day two, let's talk about psychology. And there was this information. And then there's an kind of like an assignment, if you will, this is every morning, um, telling people something that I want them to talk about. So sometimes it's share what motivates you. Sometimes it's share what something that you're grateful for your favorite, find your, you know, share a link to your favorite dinner recipe, your favorite instant pot recipe, um, a lot of food ones. Today was talking about Shakeology and getting people to read a little bit about what Shakeology is and what's included. So people comment, that doesn't count for points. I don't even worry about it. I want to keep it super simple. I don't track that. I used to, but I didn't see the return. So now what I count is there's that morning post and then every night there's an accountability check-in and that's posted at 7 p.m. Eastern time every night. We put a hashtag so that people can search it because that was the only trouble we had. So we tell people to search whatever day it is. So we do a hashtag and then we tell people check off everything you did today. And then below there's a different prompt. Um, today was tell us about the best part of your day. Um, a lot of times it's just a fun icebreaker. I Google literally like best icebreakers and sometimes it'll be like what's your favorite 90s tv show drop a gif of your favorite of, or like of your crush childhood crush it's usually something fun that has zero to do with health and fitness for the prompt on those nightly check-ins because what i tell people is i want you showing up in the community and talking to each other so if that if you quote unquote failed today and you fell off the wagon, I don't want you to run away. I want you to at least show up and talk to the community and stay with us and stay in this game. And you get credit just for showing up. But here's how I can check and I tell them it's your moment of self-reflection and to be honest with yourself and the group, here's where I can kind of see how people are doing. Um, when they check off the poll. So sometimes if I see like, like today you see obviously water, most people are checking off so far. But if I see that one's low, then sometimes the next day I'll go, hey, not many of you checked off your water goal. So let's do a water challenge for today's morning prompt. Um, but I do a morning post and a nightly post. And the only thing I count for the accountability leaderboard is did you leave a comment on the nightly check-in? I don't worry about points for if they followed their meal plan or if they got their workout or anything. It's purely, did you show up in the group? Because that's what we reward is being accountable and showing up in the community. Awesome. That answered so many questions. Thank you. I found that helps because like I've had a lot of people over the years who are like, saying they fell off the wagon and I'm going to quit the challenge. And I'm like, no, that's the last thing you should do. We, that, this is when you need the community the most is when you need to get like people rallying around you and inspiring you and supporting you. So by rewarding the accountability and rewarding people talking to each other, I, I think that's helped kind of create a culture where people are willing to admit that they are not following the plan that they wanted to. Um, because the, the point is that we're all here just to show up and that's what we reward.
I love that. And I think for me, that's been one of the reasons, um, there's a lot of things I don't love about um, the revamp 21 day fix. But one of the things I do like is hearing the cast like moan and groan because like on the super produced things, like you don't necessarily hear that. Um, and so it is sort of that showing up and kind of being in the same mindset of like, sometimes it's a struggle for everybody. And so it's, it's, it's just nice to have that kind of community um, that not everybody's perfect. I don't think any of us are perfect. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Have you seen some of those high horses out there? <laughs> Real perfect folks out there. Not this team, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I've started unfollowing people. I'm like, listen, I know she's real high up in the biz, but I can't with her anymore. Um, and don't. I'm not gonna. There you go. Unfollow. Um, okay. What else do you guys have? Anything? No? Right. Well, I have some great ideas around May. Um, for those of you guys that are in Road to Residual, our blue season is extended because they extended the um, test group. So we should be working on recruiting for the rest of April. And then we're going to move into gold for May. And we're going to be teaching your March and April people how to use gold, right? And how to get to Emerald and um, capitalize on the beach body compensation plan, of course, within um, compliance, if you will. So does anyone have any other questions? No. Well, thank you so, 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 so much, Kate. I am more than happy to return the favor. Um, I, I work full time, so I'm happy to do like a, a time management or whatever your team may need. Um, awesome. Whatever. I appreciate that. Um, no need Mark made. That's what? Mark Delfa, who's on the call. Hey, buddy. We run team calls together um, and we actually have a date, I think in the next week or so to plan out our next quarter of team calls. So we will probably be taking you up on that. Yeah, if you need me, um, I can do, I could do my accident too. I don't know if we were at Super Saturday in January. That's me. So if you, um, if you want me to do that, I can do that as well. What are you laughing at, Whitney? You're just, but you're like, hey, that's me. <laughs> And that just made me laugh. It's an amazing story. You should have her. I'm not that disclaimed. <laughs> she just I, likes to laugh at me. Uh, me like, I don't know if you were there, but yeah, that's me. I can do that as well. But that's, those are two, my two main things, time management and, you know, the whole brain surgery, never walking again situation. So um, anyway, so we're good. Uh, I'm going to stop this recording and be quiet before Whitney laughs at me more. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. And thanks again, Kate. This was amazing. I'll get the recording up on the team page. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye.